All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar. I'm seeing some of you guys are coming in now. So we're going to give one or two more minutes for everyone to join in before we get started. Okay. Let's do some quick admin and housekeeping stuff. Can you guys all hear me fine and then see this bright orange screen? Can Can you raise your hand? to see if you can see. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, let's do another check. If anyone is feeling, okay, more people coming in, hi. Hi everyone, for those of you who are joining, we're just waiting for everyone else to join in before we get started. Um, for those of you who are, um, we're gonna check the usage of the Q and A chat. You can ask us questions. So the chat room, usually for our webinars and workshop, we disable the chat room because there's a lot of attendees and sometimes it gets a bit um, hard to manage. So uh, the chat room is disabled. However, you can use the Q and A chat to ask any questions. So I'm gonna test um, the Q and A chat. So if any of you feel comfortable sharing where you're from, and then what time it is in your country, city you are, then try to um, submit the questions or the answer through Q&A chat. I'll go first. Um, I'm usually based out of New York, but currently I'm in Malta. And then in Malta here, it's 3.30 p.m. <clears throat> and um, just to check with the show of hands, how many of you here are parents? Raise your hand if you are a parent, please. And um, if you are a student, raise your hand. Okay. Are there any counselors in the room? Raise your hand. School counselor teachers, raise your hand. Okay. So it's majority students and um, it's okay if you don't uh, wanna share what time zone it is, but you know that there's a Q&A function. You can ask questions to me about the programs later. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. So, hi guys, welcome to Millie's Guide to Applying to Competitive Summer Programs. So, I'm gonna say first things first. Um, so, please note that not all the programs are open and available for the 2024 summer just yet. Many of the programs open their application in December and January timeframe. Um, so we're gonna talk about some of those that are not yet open too, but then keep in mind the uh, you may not be able to apply at the moment. And then second point is a bit of an obvious one, but then know that not all programs will be relevant for you based on your age or your grade level, and sometimes based on your nationality, sometimes your academic background. So age-wise, a lot of times there's like a specific requirements of you have to be 15 by this time, or you have to be rising grade 11, which is year 12 by that time. So know that those are kind of like the limitations for you. And then one more point is um, uh, feel free to email us or set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation for number one, additional options. We have a database of about 400 summer school programs that we've put together, and then we'll be able to give you different um, suggestions for you because um, we're not covering, we cannot cover every single one of them today. And then number two is um, in case you want help in the application. So um, crafting your essay and um, crafting your resume. These are paid programs that we offer, but as the title indicates for today's session, we uh, for the competitive programs, there are a lot of elements that go into the application, even though even though it's a summer school and it's not a university like application. And in that case, for you to be standing out amongst the candidates, um, you could look for help in like essay critiquing or um, professional help in your CV and resume um, critiquing, which we offer on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And then thirdly, some of these programs, not all programs that we do have partnerships and then we can provide discount code to you. So if any of those are your interest, uh, email us, which is, um I think that Millie is sharing the email address, but 
it's um go to our website we, you can find our community at milligroup.com study with millie at milligroup.com or just uh, set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation through our website and then we'll be able to um share more options give discount code if available and then help you with the um, application All right i'm jenna i'm one of the millie co-founders and um yeah today's session is about um not about our program. It's about the options that's available for you guys um, during the summer. And then I want to make sure that, you know, this is independent of our, Millie as a company also offers um, different um, academic mentoring, which is uh, basically a tutoring um, in like IB, APA levels, like SAT prep, et cetera, et cetera. And we also offer university guidance, guidance coaching. So that's essay critiquing, creating your, extracurricular um, activities list, the whole aspect of the um, the university guidance counseling. However, I want to say that today's session is about um, options, that it's not about our program, um, but we get a lot of questions about what we think are the good programs for students to pursue. So on the extracurricular rep, we're just suggesting and sharing information and know that we're not affiliated with any of those um programs ourselves <clears throat> and um yep yeah, um one more point other than the fact that i'm a um, founder of the millie is um uh, i also grew up internationally myself so most of you are coming from international or independent schools because that's our cohort and um yeah i'm originally from korea and then i grew up mostly in the u.s and then um when i was growing up i wish that there were more resources like millie which is like not 100% American, not 100% British, but something that's in, in the middle for the international community, whether you are in an IB school, AP school, A-level school, French box school, you name it. So we created that specific um, uh, resources and the place for this community. Um, feel free to ask me any questions also. This is my Instagram and then the QR code up top goes to my LinkedIn, so feel free. All right, so let's get into the main bit of today's session. By the way, we're going to have about 30 minute session today. So first point that I want to mention is that not all summer programs are the same. Um, so we're going to look at some different types of summer programs. Okay. So the first type we're going to check out is the summer school, summer camp programs that's hosted by private organizations. A good example of such is a program called invest in in the uk anyone familiar with invest in because a lot of uk students are familiar with this raise your hand if you've heard of it okay i see some hands coming up right so invest in is a good example of a private organizations hosting summer summer school programs um for those of you who don't know and not familiar with it invest in has one to three week long job shadowing program for students age 12 to um, 18. So let's check out their website. So on their website, if they go, you can find out more about it. But um, basically, if you're interested in like um, investment banking, then you can choose the summer experiences and then you can either do, you know, one week or two week program. And then they have these programs, you register and then you pay you either, either you're going to be living in a dorm or not living in a dorm, et cetera, et cetera, that that's like what you're choosing. The point here is um, this is an example of a um, um, private organization that hosting this kind of summer programs, okay? And then second type, let's look at the second type of the, um, <clears throat> the summer programs um, that are hosted by boarding schools or prep schools. Um, so let's look at one of the examples. One of the examples here is a Phillips Exeter Academy in the US. So Phillips Exeter Academy is sort of would say one of the top boarding schools in the US, the top five boarding schools, uh, fair to say. And then they host summer programs for high school students um, around the world. And then in this case, um, here, you can also go apply, blah, blah, blah. And then this is the timing. One of the commonalities of the um, commonalities of the boarding or the private school led programs, this mimics high school curriculum most closely. So 
when we are talking about the um, private programs, private uh, company program, they can have many different types of format, whether that's a summer school, English learning, um, um, you know, job shadowing, etc. But oftentimes, oftentimes, privately run programs are not competitive. Like you can pay the tuition and you can go oftentimes. Now, on the uh, boarding school and the prep school programs, programs are mimicking the high school curriculum most, meaning it's more like you're going to have a timetable with like different subjects in it. And then there's also like music and sports and um, um, art and those things are offered as an extracurricular after school time as well. So this is would be more into you're actually like learning um, the um, high school materials. So the third option is the university led programs. Um, one of the examples here is a Cornell University in the US is hosting pre-college studies. So a lot of times the high school program, if you wanna search for your own high school programs, um, you can contact us, but also if you wanna search for it, use the word pre-college and you'll be able to find the programs. So let's look at their website. So this page is not just for the summer. It talks about the winter courses and summer courses, et cetera. But so this is held by Cornell University. And then um, notice this stat here, 95% of the courses are actually taught by Cornell faculty members. So university programs, you need to also keep in mind, not all university programs are taught by the faculty or the senior lecturer or the PhDs of that school. It could be outsourced. So if you want to check the quality or kind of the credibility of them, maybe you can also check out those information or um, get more um, recommendations. Now, we're going back to private organizations. Why? Okay. Um, this could be very obvious for many of you, but a lot of times the private organizations also use the premise of the universities and then for boarding or for other, your class, hold, holding the class. So don't always assume that something is held at a certain university. It doesn't mean that that is affiliated or led by the university, okay? So in Cornell's case, we saw, you know, we saw that there's um, 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 disclaimer that 95% of the courses are taught by the professors and majority of the U.S. Um, university programs are hosted by the universities themselves. And then, but in this case, there's a company called Oxford Summer Courses. And then in this case, they have, they are doing it in Oxford and Cambridge and you get to stay at the Oxford um, dorm. You get to stay in Cambridge dorm, but doesn't mean that it's hosted by the Oxford or Cambridge. This is an example of a private organizations hosting summer courses. So, those are the general types of the um, different options. You may be looking for different ones based on your interest, right? And then now that's an overview. Now let's actually go into the comp looking at some of the competitive programs, okay? <clears throat> I think the first point we wanna mention is that does competitive equal excellent? Um, so, it's not always the case, but many things in life are, right? If um, university is comp competitive to get into, let's say, um, again, Harvard, Yale, it is an equivalent of excellence. If a job is hard to get, SpaceX, um, Tesla, Goldman Sachs, oftentimes it is related to the excellence that you're looking for. Um, so we're gonna benchmark, today's session, we're gonna talk about what are the most competitive and selective and hard to get into programs. And um, our past Millie students who've attended these, these sessions, they've in general had very positive experiences. However, we this is not a recommendation. This is not us affiliated. So knowing that we're just talking about competitiveness and that it's most likely to be an excellent program, okay? So 
Um, let's look at the application side of these competitive programs. Um, first off, what we want to look at is that what are some of the common factors in these competitive summer programs? So these are some of the pointers. Applications, typically the competitive programs, applications open very early and they close very early. Um, a lot of these programs have their priority deadlines in January to March. So for those of you looking into this, you guys have, you know, some programs you have a month and a half to apply and then that will be the end of it. Um, yeah. Whereas majority of just normal summer programs have their deadline from March to June. So that's like one commonality that we saw in these competitive programs. Second one is application process mimics almost like a mini university application. What do we mean by that? Oftentimes they require essay, um, motivation letter or a creative essay. And um, number two, to transcript. Number three, recommendation letters from your teacher, from your counselor. And um, number four, um, the English proficiency test if you're not coming from uh, English um, taught countries. And testing, um, some sort of a math or English type of a test that's proprietary to that program. And then CV or resume. It's a lot to sort of ask for in terms of just the summer program. But what we noticed is um, that the more competitive the program it is, there's a more of a requirement. Um, we talked about how the pri private programs usually don't have much of these requirements. It um, could have just English proficiency tests or could require a 100 word, 100 to 150 word short answer and then just pay for the program versus the programs that we're going to talk about has a lot more of the components to it. And this is just this just so happened to be, but all the programs that we're going to talk about today, and the majority of the competitive programs we know are in the U.S. Um, right. So we have pointed out the testing is not that common. The other as elements are way more common in these um application process. All right. So without further ado, now look at let's look at these programs, shall we? We have, I think, seven programs that we wanted to talk about today. And then, yeah, and then I'll take any questions after that. So here is the most selective program list for high school students um, that we found. So the first one is Wharton Global Youth Program. And um, yeah, feel free to screenshot this, feel free to, you know, um, grab this and then um, you can do your own search. Um, so who is it for usually? It's for finance, some, the, so next to the dash, we try to put the types of student who would be interested in these programs. Someone who's interested in finance, someone who's interested in econ or entrepreneurship. This program would be the um, one of the hardest to get into. Um, let's go see it. So Wharton Global Youth Program, they already have the application open. <clears throat> and then let's see, that was not what I was looking for. These are the types of programs that they offer. So obviously Wharton is known to be one of the best, if not the best undergrad um, business programs in the world. And then they offer uh, different types of program. And then if you look at the bottom of it, you'll be able to see, sorry about that. You'll be able to see the different requirements for different programs. So notice how some programs are only for juniors and seniors, so grade 11 and grade 12, um, or some programs are only for the seniors. And then some programs are for younger students as well. I think at this point, with the show of hand, let's see one more time. How many of you guys here are class of 2025? Raise your hand. So that would be juniors. Okay. How about class of 2026? Um, grade 10. How about grade 20, um, class of 2027? Grade 9? All right. So you can see which ones would be relevant for you, right? So that's one. And then let's check the... um. Let's check the uh, deadline for this because we talked about the deadline earlier. Right. Uh, let's look at the uh, requirements as well. So you need an essay. You need a recommendation. 
you need an array of extracurricular activities. So count this as a CV, the resume side of the things. And then you have a transcript and then the school grades uh, requirements. Yeah. Look at the priority deadlines. The deadline for the um, majority of the programs are by end of January. And then whenever you see that priority and the priority deadline and the final deadline, the tip here is it's a bit obvious, but the earlier you apply, the more like the higher chance of you getting it. So if you're serious about it, apply before the priority deadline and don't wait till the final, final deadline. Okay. All right. That was the Wharton program. Second one. Yale Young Global Scholars Program, or more commonly known, uh, known as the YYGS program. This one is gonna be a perfect, um, an excellent choice for a political science student, history or humanity student. Let's go check it out. Yale Young Global Scholars Program, deadline is January 10th, 2024, right? And then you have multiple timings to choose from. The most well-known fact about the Yale Young Scholars Program is that each summer they have students from 150 countries. So it is a very important factor for this program to have the students from all around the world. And then they're also having US students from all 50 states of the US. This will obviously make things more competitive when you guys are applying. And um, yeah, so keep that in mind. If this globalness is something of your interest, as the name indicates, then um, it would be something for you to look into. Now, the third one is probably one of the best known programs for high performing American students. Right. So when I say high performing American students, that's because, you know, um, you guys are coming from international international schools. We work with students in the international school. So not many of our students are coming from the U.S., but um, put it into equivalence of like, let's say in your home country, something is like known to be one of the prestigious program, whatnot. So this Johns Hopkins program is known to be a prestigious program for the amongst the American parents and American students. Typically, this is called a CTY program. So Johns Hopkins Center for Talented Youth Program. And then this is for many different types of students because they offer many different um, um, subjects and um, different options. Let's go check it out. So this is Johns Hopkins Center for Talented Youth Program. And then one thing that's interesting about this is um. Know that this is very, very broad and it's helpful for any gifted or talented students. So if you look at it, you can see how it's not just for high school students. It's offered for students from like grade two all the way to grade 12. And it's offered in many different locations as well. How is this possible? This system or this program is franchised from the Johns Hopkins. So they offer the courses at Johns Hopkins, but they offer courses at different universities, right? So if you are in a certain city, if your family is traveling to the city or if you're located near that city, it's, it, it's easy for you to choose that location and then search for the subjects. Same idea in terms of the subjects, it's for any types of students. So it's, um, let me just um, give you an example. Let's say you are at grade, um, you are a grade 11 or 12, and then you are interested in like math and science, right? This makes sense. And then there's also the eligibility level, which I'm gonna talk about it a little bit in a bit, but let's say this is your filter. So you filter it. <clears throat> and then it's going to show you the options that's relevant for you. So you can, as a, as a, from a seventh grade to the 11th grade, you can learn astrophysics, right? Biotechnology. You can learn crypto, cryptology, electrical engineering, um, and then fast paced high school biology. You can learn in advance um, fast paced high school physics, fundamentals of microeconomics. These are the topics that you would find typically at university level, not a high school level subject, but you'll be able to find them, for instance, like game theory and economics. Very, very, <laughs> game theory is something that you would really learn in like um, second or the third year in university. In instructions astronomy, I think you get the point. 
So these are more academically driven. And then you could choose from many different topics. If you move to the humanities side, you'll be able to see uh, topics in your area as well. And then you can choose the location if you want. Like I want to stay at Johns Hopkins campus only because that's sort of my dream school. I want to see what they offer. Filtered again. And then these are the topics that's offered in um, Johns Hopkins campus. Now, one very special thing about the CTY program is this eligibility. So eligibility is, um so Johns Hopkins programs is one of the few programs that you need to take a test and you need to get a certain score to be able to apply for the programs, okay? And um, the, the level of the test or your score is like higher as you get to this point. Emerging is like the easiest course to take. Uh, CTY is the second level and then advanced CTY is the hardest to take. So from here, if you look at this, um, up top, you would be like the global environment is a CTY level. So you get a certain level of score, you are eligible to take the CTY uh, classes. Um, you can see that advanced CTY ones, I think hopefully this makes sense. Advanced CTY fundamentals of microeconomics. To take this particular class, um, you need to have advanced CTY um, testing score. Astrophysics, I think it makes sense. To take an astrophysics class, you need to have an uh, advanced CTY level um, testing requirement. So that is something very special about uh, Johns Hopkins. So if you're thinking about this one, their deadline is pretty late. So you can apply till much later, but um, you need make sure that you do the testing. So in terms of the testing, I'll show you here in terms of the eligibility, like let's go to high school because you guys are in high school. Um, so there's many different types of tests that you can do. So if you already have a SAT or the ACT score, you can submit it based on and that score, you are eligible. If you don't have those scores, you can take these other tests and then you can see how you perform. Um, yeah, so let's see. I think there is like a chart somewhere that, um, you know, uh, that shows the grading of each age group, but it's somewhere in this, um, somewhere in this, um, in this section. So one of the accepted tests um, and there's like a different um, score that you need to have. Um, all right. So the next one is the, um, for engineering student, anyone here wants to study engineering, raise your hand. I don't want you guys to get bored. So um, let's see if anyone here is uh, looking for engineering school. No one, okay. So, this is uh, a the Engineering Summer Academy at Penn, and or shortened word, it's a ESAP. Um, again, one of the most competitive ones for engineering um, students. So come here, and then this one priority deadline is March first, so not too late, not I mean, not too early. And then in terms of the courses, you would be able to see these are the types of courses that's offered biotechnology, complex network, computer graphics, computer science, nanotechnology, and bio uh, robotics. Let's go back to the admissions. Um, this is another one of those points that 2024 application hasn't opened yet. So probably they're gonna open their application by December. That's also common for a lot of these programs. Okay. And then let's see application requirements. Um, December, they're gonna open it, okay? You have a online application, official high school transcript, two letters of recommendations. Um, and then you need to have a standardized test, right? So notice how there's like different types of um, 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 requirements, but once you have all these materials ready, you can apply to a couple of these programs and see if you're gonna get into those or not. All right. Next one is a Carnegie Mellon summer program. Um, it's a known fact. Carnegie Mellon is very known for its computer science. And um, it's not a surprise that their computer science scholars program is a very highly selective program. So let's go see it. Carnegie Mellon has a lot of different pre-college programs, but within that, we want to introduce you to the CS scholars. Um, so for CS scholars, their deadline is March 1st, so it's not too early. 
and then the program length is going to be four weeks. Um, all right. And um, here's the overview. Um, you can kind of see what's the application requirements. You need a high school transcript, trans standardized test. You already have SAT, ACT. So who knew SAT would be still used for summer school application too, when you thought that the um, all the universities are going test optional. Um, responses to essay prompts, you need two letters of recommendation. So a lot to do. Right. Um, last one is a launch X program. And this is a very, very um, sought after and competitive program for and best for entrepreneurial students. Um, one of the key differences, they offer online programs as well. Let's go see. Wow, this is now the, the earliest deadline, right? The deadline for next summer program is January 7th. So if you're interested, you guys should be um, applying now. Let's see how to apply. Notice how they actually had a earlier deadline. So um, LaunchX is one of those programs that really, really has an early deadline. So for those of you who are interested, I would highly recommend you to do the January 7th deadline. And then what are the things that you need? General info, transcript, activities involvement. So this is like the CV. And one new aspect, right? This is like a video and presentation. You may also add your extra presentation of a sort to the application process, okay? So those are all the programs that we wanted to cover today. And then let's recap some of the different elements again. So, <laughs> These are the three programs amongst what you've seen that has a January deadline. So if that's of your interest, obviously get started with the application as soon as possible because you will need a recommendation letter or two and um, teachers are not gonna be able to just whip up, a rec whip up a recommendation letter during Christmas season. So do that. And then there's essays that you need to write. You can do it on your own or you can come to us and then email us or ask us and then uh, we'll be able to offer programs um, at a paid um, basis, how we can help at, uh, um, drafting and then critiquing your essay. Second type is the Johns Hopkins, right? Johns Hopkins has the testing requirements. Again, if you've already have the SAT or ACT, testing you've done, you can see your score and then see if it matches up to the requirements. So uh, if you're doing a STEM subject, they're only look, asking for the math score. And if you're doing the humanity subject, they're only looking for the English score, okay? So, and then there's a chart, which we didn't get to see it, but then has like for grade 10 CTY program is math needed at X score, right? So you need to get that. If you don't have that score, take the test online um, on their website, and then you'll be able to submit that score. Next one is, um, earlier we talked about how majority of the private organization programs are not as competitive, but LaunchX is a exception. It's a privately held organization. They have these summer courses at MIT, um, University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, and maybe some other campuses this year as well, but this is a private organization, but highly sought after. Any questions so far? Is everything clear for you guys? Can you, um, can you raise your hand if everything has been so far clear? Cause I wanna know if everyone's following. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, super helpful to know that um, it's been clear. So this is now like sort of a ending sort of the present side of the presentation, but we understand that the summer schools are not for everyone. Um, and that's because they can be very expensive. The program itself is expensive. Um, and also the flying and all that stuff could be very expensive depending on where you're coming from, right? So I wanted to end with some of the alternative options for you. It's not end all be all, you cannot afford to do this. Um, and then not many students can afford to do um, these programs. So what are some of the alternative options? We think that these are some of the productive summer activities that you can do. 
So the first one is internship. There's a lot of opportunities not um, online as well. So search on um, LinkedIn or student website to search for those opportunities. And then um, if you're coming from, you guys are coming from Millie Partner Schools, I'm assuming, then um, we also have a summer internship, virtual summer internship open. So you can apply to um, work at Millie and then meet with some other students along the way as well. You can also use the summertime. Summer is a great time to do some more of the entrance exam prep. So we, we saw the importance of testing, not only in the uh, university setting, but the summer school setting. So you can study SAT or ACT if that's something that is needed for you, or LNET if you are an aspiring uh, lawyer in the UK, something that you can already practice. And then um, GAT, which is um generalized aptitude tests. Um, um, some of the countries require this or et cetera. You know what kind of testing that's needed for you. Also, if you're an IB student, this is an excellent time to spend more time on your CAS project. Um, if you're not an I IB student, you can still do volunteer work during the summer. Think about doing public speaking or practicing. There's online resources and also taking MOOC courses. MOOC are these um, Coursera, edX, you know, these sources that are free to a marginal cost that you can learn about a certain subject. If you're interested in psychology, right, and then these summer programs are way too expensive or way too far, go on to Coursera, edX, and then find out the psychology-related program at your dream university and then follow along the program. It will, it, you can show your interest in your subject when you apply to universities. And also for your own, the most important thing is for your own knowledge, right? And you can also use it for your college essay, how you developed more interest in XYZ area because you've done, you've taken five courses. Personal project, um, good time. Uh, in other sessions that we talk about the extracurricular, we talk about some students opened up a, a sticker shop on uh, um, Instagram. Some student opened a student activist channel on the TikTok and um, in their Medium um, blog, et cetera, et cetera. There's different ways of doing personal project. Obviously, there's more of academic projects you can do as well. Um, but yeah, creative ways of thinking about this. And then you can also pre-study for next year. If you are a rising IB1 student, rising A-level student, um, rising junior, you could study those or also your rising IB2, upper six, et cetera. This is a great time to spend more time. And um, what I will share is that we have resources for different, we have different Millie's guides like this for all of these um, types of um, activities. So I'll show you where you can find them, okay? So this is um Millie website. Assuming again, all of you guys are coming from um, partner school. If you don't know how to log into your account, you haven't made a account, um, feel free to reach out to us. Basically you go to our website, milligroup.com, go to this section account. And then I'm already logged in, but um, you can sign up and you gotta use your school email address. We are, your, your page is linked by your school email, so don't use Gmail. But let's say once you use the your school email and then you log in, there's a Millie's Guide section here. And then here you can access 500 hours of recorded materials that's relevant to university prep, careers, extracurricular. So for you to figure out more about the summer options, choose extracurricular and then see all of these um, activities on the bottom, like how to start a student newspaper, school newspaper, how to volunteer as a high school student, um, how to join in academic competitions, uh, high school clubs, internships, um, choosing the right summer program that's um, similar to today's session. Go to page two and um, public speaking, human right activism, so how to start a blog, how to run a model UN, how to excel in CAS. You get the point. There are so many of these resources. All of these sessions are like 30 minutes, an hour long. So you can just like go, let's say, um, you know, go to, if you want to start your own YouTube channel, go here. And then there's a recording. And then this is done by one of the student influencers that has more than 100,000 followers. And then she's walking you through how to do that um, or her journey.
as our being one. So yeah, definitely utilize more of our resources. And then if you have any questions, let me know. So that's the end of today's um, presentation. Any questions, guys? I'm going to give um, two minutes for everyone to send in your questions, if any. Seems like there's no questions. If that's the case, um, again, I'll be um, ways to contact us and find out more information. Number one, go to our website. If you're already signed on, do what I just did. If not, sign in, make an account first and you'll be able to see. If any issues, email us and we'll be able to help you as long as you're coming from our partner school. And then number two, um, let's go back to these popular programs again. I'm going to show it on the screen for like 10 seconds, screenshot it, um, research yourself, go and then apply. And um, if you want our help, just reach out to us um, via email or set up a consultation and we'll be able to help you. Thank you everyone for joining today and um, we'll see you in some other future sessions.